hey guys welcome back to a new video in this one i'm going to show you how to build this 100 kilowatt solar power grid using electrical edge mod and also how to transmit all of the power produced by these grids across long distances using power poles power cables and grid transformers finally you can convert all of the power produced which is in watts into hg per second which is hbm energy right now we are not producing max power because it is only early morning during the afternoon the power production peaks out now you can make this design more interesting by introducing grid switches which will allow you to disconnect or connect your solar grid to your main power grid. But that is something that I am not going to cover in this video. However, if a lot of you guys want to see it, if you request it in the comments, I will make a video on using the grid switches for sure. So for now, it is going to be the normal solar grid and how to transmit the power across long distances. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. The items needed for this build are going to be the 2x3 rotating solar panel, you will need total 210 of these, very high voltage cable, T1 utility pole with transformers, high voltage cable, grounding cable, then some sort of foundation block like concrete, energy exporter which will be used to convert watts into RF, then you will need RF to HE converter which will give us our HBM energy, and finally we have the solar tracker which will be used to track the motion of the sun in the sky. So here's something about the solar panel. It has two sides, a positive and a negative side. The positive is marked by orange and power is going to come out of here. As for the negative side, you will need to place a grounding cable right here. So place down seven solar panels in series. The way you do it is that the positive of uh, one solar panel should go into the negative of another solar panel. So in this way, place down seven in total. There we go. And now as we need a total of 21, place down two more rows of seven solar panels like this. So now we have 21 total solar panels placed in a seven by three grid. Now start right clicking the solar panels with your solar tracker chip. What this will do is the solar panel will start tracking the motion of the sun in the sky. And in this way, the solar panels will run at the maximum efficiency most of the time. So with all of the chips placed, now if I set the time to 6000 or basically afternoon, the solar panels will change their direction like this. And once again, if I go back to 3000, the solar panels will come back to the original position. So yeah, now place down your grounding cable on the negative side. And for the positive side, we are going to place a single T1 utility pole. So bring some high voltage or very high voltage cable like this and in the middle place down your T1 utility pole. And that's one module of the build completed. Let's understand the reason behind this 7 by 3 pattern. We have 7 solar panels which are placed in series. In series voltage is added up. So we have 118 which is the voltage provided by a single solar panel times 7. And that will give us 826 volts at the end of each line. Now 800 volts is the optimum voltage at which a high voltage cable can perform. So as you can see, we get 826 volts at the end of each line. Also you can see that the max power that each solar panel will provide is 520 watts. So we have 520 watts by a single solar panel times 21 and that will give us 10.9 kilowatt power which will be provided by this 7 by 3 grid now if we multiply this by 10 which is 10 modules we will get 109200 watts of power which is multiplied by 0.33 the conversion factor for he and that will give us roughly 36399 he per second now of course some of this is going to be lost in resistance so we will get roughly 35600 he per second so i hope you guys understood that calculation and now that this is done let's make the other remaining modules as well so you will have a total of five modules placed in a single line place the solar tracker chip in all of them connect them in the middle with t1 utility poles and yeah that is five modules of the solar panels done which will provide us with roughly 50 kilowatts and also don't forget to place the grounding cables. This is a mistake that is often made, but yeah, it's important. Now to make the another module or basically a similar module, leave a one block gap in the middle 
then one more block gap for the cables and then we will start making another 7x3 grid in the similar way we did before. So I am just going to speed through this entire footage right here. There we go. So now we have 10 modules of 7x3 solar panels. Also place solar tracking chips in all of these so that they can perform at their max efficiency. And once that is done, we have completed our 100 kilowatt solar grid. So making sure that all of the cables have been correctly placed, it's now time to get the output in like a single cable or in a single pole. So leave a few blocks gap and then place a T1 utility pole and this utility pole is going to be our output. So we have total 5 output points and in this way each output pole is going to carry a total of 20 kilowatts. So the way we are going to connect this is using high voltage cable. Right click on a pole with the high voltage cable and then connect it to the output. Similarly, do the same thing with the other pole. Make sure that you have not connected these two poles. Instead, connect both of these poles individually to the output. And in this way, each of the solar panel pole is going to transmit 10 kilowatt and our output pole is going to have 20 kilowatt on it. So in this way, we have made all five of the connections. And as of right now, the build is actually done if you don't want to transmit the power over long distance. If you want to get the output, place your energy exporter right here and set the output to the fourth one, the IC to T4 and set the resistance value to 30 and do the same thing on all of the other poles. The resistance value should be set to 30 and also don't forget to press enter. And once you have done that, in front of all of the energy exporters, we are going to place down our RF to HE converters as these energy exporters are right now giving us RF, not HE. So place down 5 RF to HE converters and connect them all using electric city connectors and your cable drum. So I have set the time to afternoon which is 6000. So right now all of the solar panels are producing maximum power possible. And if I connect all of the RF to HE converters to a single energy storage block, we will get the max amount of power possible, which is going to be roughly 35.7 kilo HE per second. Yeah, that's going to be the maximum output of this plant. But let's say that you want to transmit this power over long distance. Your base is not anywhere near the solar grid. For that, we are going to use the grid transformer. Now the grid transformer has two sides, one with big poles and the one with small poles. The small is the side where low voltage is going to go and the bigger side is where high voltage is going to come out from. So place the side with the small poles towards the T1 utility poles and connect the poles with the grid transformer using high voltage cable. So what this will do is transform or basically step the voltage up by four times. Right now the T1 utility poles have 3.3 volts on them or oh sorry 3.3 kilovolts on them and this will be converted to 13.2 or 12.9 probably. Next up, we are going to use the T2 transmission tower to connect with these grid transformers. So place a T2 transmission tower like this and then connect the grid transformer using the high voltage cable. So one thing to note here is that the T1 transmission poles they have a connection range of 40 meters and the T2 transmission poles, they have a connection range of 90 meters. So that is why we are going to use a T2 transmission towers in order to transmit this power over long distance. So let's say that I want to take my power right there to the second transmission pole. You can connect them like this. But for the sake of this video, let's assume that this is where our power ends. So this is where our base starts. So in order to get the voltage down again, we will place another grid transformer, but this time facing the opposite direction. So now we want to convert all of that high voltage back to low voltage. So connect all of the T2 transmission towers on the big side of the grid transformers. And now all of the smaller sides of the transformer are going to be connected to T1 transmission ports. 
so there we go connect all of the small sides like this and once all of the five connections are made the process is going to be the same as we did before so all of these transmission or t1 transmission poles they are going to have energy exporters set to a resistance value of 30 and once that's done get your rf to he converter and connect them using electric city connectors and cable drop Here goes the final connection, one this side and the other one the next side. And with this done, you will see that the power will reach an optimum value of 35.7, oh sorry, 35.66 kilohe per second. Now the reason for this drop is because the, all of these poles, the grid transformers, they have resistance. And in resistance, some of the power is lost. That is why we are getting less power than we were getting before placing all of the transformers and the poles. Now time for the real test. Let's see how much power we get during an entire day. So as the sun rises and the time is 5.15 am, power will start producing or basically the solar panels will start producing power. So in the early morning, power will not reach its maximum value. It will gradually rise up, but it will not reach its maximum value. So right now we are getting roughly 20 kilohe per second. When the time is 10 a.m., at that time we will reach our maximum value or our peak value, which is going to be 35.6 kilohe per second. So let's wait for the time to hit 10 a.m. There we go. And now power has reached its max value, 35.6 kilohe per second. Now as it approaches or the time approaches 2 p.m power will start dropping so right now it's 2 30 pm and power has already started dropping and as power will drop so will the temperature of all of the poles and the power transmitted by the transformers so yeah and don't worry in this configuration none of your poles are going to explode and finally during the night time as it is after 6 pm power will rapidly drop down until it reaches 0 he per second during the night time during an entire day, we got 20.74 million HG and that's pretty good for a passive power generation system. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, do smash that like button and if you have any confusion regarding this build, please feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. Peace out guys, stay safe.